If I had a radio jingle, it would be da 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 spastic bowels. <laughs> and now, cheese wits. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. All right. You tried see. to call me earlier today. Why did? Why was that? Oh, that was accidental. Okay. I don't care to call you during the day. I figure you're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it's 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 terrible because this this whole video calling thing. I've got a friend on Facebook, and we we were just bullshit about something. Some girl I've only met in person one time in my life, and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I'm hearing this noise going. I'm like, oh my god, I'm calling her, and Jesus, that's a picture of me taking a shit. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. You know, so good. much of your life revolves around dung. Hey, look, you eat, sleep, shit, and die. What the fuck else is there? Like it just feels like you, you, your, your percentage of time spent <laughs> appears Ooh. to be with the shitting. If I had a radio jingle, it would be da 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 spastic bowels. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> play, play play that into a fucking record. Hey, what do you got? Did I just see you scratching your head? Yeah. Right you, do you need head and shoulders? I do not. <laughs> do you have Do you have psoriasis, Jessica? I do. I do not have psoriasis. <laughs> mm, psoriasis and some some nice body wash for angry cats. That's oh, my what, wife. Mm. My wife today informed me. Oh dear. That 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 uh, boob sweat is is swoob. swoob. That ass sweat, yes, yeah, swoob, and, and ass sweat is is sweat. But more than that, crotch sweat is swat. Swat. <laughs> like 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 rhythm heritage. You, you got it. It's swat. Yes, yeah, sweaty twat. Apparently, is uh, uh her um. Her coven of friends from work um, listen uh, to the show. You did put quotes around that, right? <laughs> around I've the show, or around wife, listened. <laughs> uh, the, yes, uh, my 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 wife. I've been referring to her friends as the coven for as long as my wife and I have been um, together. Yeah. Shit, I was talking about the show. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, the show. I, I like to think of it as a show. What do you think it's of it as? It's a show. I think it's a show. What do you think it is, Chris? Three people bullshitting. Yes. It's definitely. Which could, could be a show. show. And I was yeah, talking to somebody show. today who said that her favorite kind of podcasts were the kind that weren't about anything in particular, like Seinfeld. And I was like, that's now, us. I heard somebody else said to me that the show sounded like Seinfeld, except real. Yeah. And and uh, um, and when I was talking uh, to another friend today, I said, you know, they said, well, how long do you guys prep and what have you been doing? Prep. <laughs> You're kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the prep is, oh shit, someone's calling on the on the, on the thing. I, how the hell do I get connected? Yeah, that's our show prep. Oh Christ, it's six fifteen. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is. That's it. That's the show prep right there. Life is and prep. I was explaining to them that. The show would suck if it was prepped and you sounded like you were trying to get to some sort of pre-done joke. Or oh, come on, Wally! I'm going to go subscribe to the fucking Daily Weenie and send it out to all three of us. Yeah. <laughs> so I've listened to a couple, not a lot of podcasts. I've listened to a couple that ju just to ju just to just to listen. I mean, there's way too many celebrity. People, too many podcasts that rely on celebrities as guests. Yes, and but the right. difference is that those podcasts have millions of listeners, and we have seven. Yeah, they sure do, but but they're not interesting because those guests just make the. Well, maybe they're interesting. I don't know, but those guests just make the rounds. They, they, just they go, definitely I'll do. I'll say it. I'll say it. I don't give a rusty fuck about the genders. Okay. The so Jenners. I, don't, <laughs> I just don't. I don't give a rusty fuck with their 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 fucking what, what is it called? Vocal fry. 
where they sit there and go, hi, my name's Kylie. Uh, uh, I'm here. To, uh, uh, I wanna, they sound like fucking John Kennedy. Okay? There is a th- the whole thing. Like, there is yeah. a thing that has come up in language and maybe the, the Jenners and Kardashians are responsible for it. I don't know. But this thing where the way that you say you pronounce words and, and vowels in particular has changed. And so like a word like amazing, which is overused to begin with, is now pronounced amazing. That's amazing. Okay, yeah. that's that's no, that's not words. That sounds like you're straining at stool, Jess. It does, <laughs> and that's what it sounds like when people talk like that. It sounds like a a ramped up version of Valley Girl. Oh, I'm yeah. gonna take a shit. It, 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 uh. it, 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 it sounds like the it sounds like Valley Girl revisited, which was was hot for a little while. And then Nicolas Cage wasn't popular anymore, and then it went away. I don't know that it entirely went away. If you talk to people, yeah, I think you're right. In some areas, they still like. Yeah, like is still used way more there, frequently yeah, than it should be, and I say it there myself. Have been, there have been mines. Remember when mines used to be very popular, particularly with with girls. Um, when I was in uh, in high school, I remember that's mines. No. Mines. No. Mines. F Although, on the end of mine. If I had ever said the word mines, and I was not referring to the plural of where coal miners go, yes. my father probably would have washed my mouth out with soap. There is no. Yeah, I used to really get on get on my daughter for for using the, for saying like. My dad did too. For saying you say like. Was it like your favorite color or is it your favorite color? (laughs) Shut up, Uh, Dad. That's the other thing that that I that I try to teach. Now I'm teaching my grandkids. You can only have one favorite. You can only no. That's not true. Not true. Yes, you can only have one. You cannot have uh, uh, like like my wife's right breast is my favorite breast. (laughs) Jesus Christ! (laughs) They can't have. Both her breasts are not my favorite. Her well, right see, and for mine, it would be because it, it has it, less hair on the nipple. Oh, stop it! <laughs> God damn it! Don't fuck, man. No, God, you're giving me fucking PTSD from this girl I dated in college who, who had fucking more titty hair than I ever will have. I, I, okay? I dated a girl like that as well. Oh, God, yeah. what the fuck, man? <laughs> Jesus Christ. And she says, oh, that's not normal? Fuck no, it's not normal. Look at goddamn Playboy or any other girl, or girl in the fucking locker room. Oh, yeah. Let's point to something that's yes. more Photoshopped Playboy. than anything. It's because all oh. of the other girls I was dating looked like Playboy bunnies. Yeah. And and you know what? You know what they didn't look like? Nipple. They didn't look like a goddamn gorilla. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> you know what? Okay. We're, not, we're not body shaming here. We're not doing that. You know what? We're not body shaming, but That's you know what? You know what my preference is? Truth. My preference is not flossing when I'm trying to suck a titty. That's a preference. That's not body shame. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Try not to laugh now, Jess. <laughs> I can see you, baby. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> but who are you dating? Jane God Goodall? Buddy. But boy, my, 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 my dental health was great in college for those couple months. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Christ I mean, almighty. But I, I think we that comes from a time when, you know, um, it, it was okay to have nipple. People, I know, okay no, no, yeah. no. This was twenty years People ago. Ish. Yeah, you know what? I, I forget. You were in college. I, I was in college thirty some years ago. But people didn't groom that way. There was no such thing as if I ever got into the shower and saw a guy fully groomed, like baby ass naked balls. I wouldn't have. Sh- I, I, I don't know what I would have thought. Okay, that was a thing. Th- that would be disturbing then. Absolutely. Now it's a little bit different. But let's get back to the titty hair in college. Okay. <laughs> so I get the first time with this girl who we will not name, but she was a twin and her sister was built the same fucking way from what I hear. And from what the I guy, hear. The guy that um, uh, I, I was talking to one day is like, hey, you finally got with Michelle, huh? Oh, shit, I shouldn't have said her name. So you still got with us? <laughs> and I said, I said, yeah. And he said, huh, got to the nipple hair, didn't you? I'm like, yeah, sure as fuck did. 
Yeah. Sure as uh, fuck did. So I'm going to defend nipple hair. A, I have no nipple hair. Nor do I. Nor do I. I, 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 have, <laughs> <laughs> I have none. But I got to tell you, when I was in college, if, if, if you hadn't, I didn't give a shit if you had nipple hair. I just didn't. I was glad to be near a nipple. I was like, great. Hey, that's a nipple. No. A girl, I was, nipple, fantastic. As long no. as I wasn't a cow or goat, I was happy. No, before <laughs> before college, I I I, I got to tell you, I did a lot of masturbating before college, and Wally, they didn't have nipple hair when I was fucking pumping the fucking baloney. Okay. No, they they they, they didn't. We no, use a magazine. Not at all. We use um, like- no no. I use my hand. <laughs> no no. I mean for <laughs> for the nipple. <laughs> When the Cosmo well, my, my dad, came. my dad got a subscription. <laughs> well, we had the subscription to Playboy. My dad's brother gave him that, and my dad in turn gave his brother Consumer Reports. But nonetheless, um, my dad bought out a video store of all beta tapes, and in this thing of beta tapes, there was about ten to fifteen porns. So we're talking late seventies, early eighties porn where there was no what, Wally? Big bush nipple hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh absolutely. The entire Bush family was there. No yes, question. But no nipple hair, I can tell you that. Yeah, no, because they couldn't grow hair on their nipples because they had way too much hair on their bush. That maybe that's the deal. Maybe that's the God, this girl no this no, this girl was you know, she was rather Sasquatchy and everywhere. So, I mean, it was not, you know, like she she moved one to the other place. She was in a Time Life cover spread. Oh, God. Now, this is straight up National Geographic shit. She was I mean, in the Sabroida film or whatever right. that's called. And it's funny. The last time I saw this girl was at the zoo. So maybe it is something. Gotcha. I don't know. All right. Seriously, no. Last time I, up. No, last time I saw her was at a zoo. Seriously. I, I didn't say she was behind a cage, but it's just kind of ironic. Was she carrying around a youngster and people were trying to get the kid away from her? No, nothing like that. I believe she actually had popcorn in one hand and nipple hair in the other. <laughs> Swinging so. from a tire. Doing her thing. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. So are we going to talk about the bombs you guys dropped last time? I feel like we need to. Uh, Chris, I think, needs to start because yeah, there, there was a bomb you dropped, Chris, last time. Well, we I here's the thing. I don't know. You know, since we we we, we sometimes tape the prices right here and it's played back on a later date. You know, I, I, I haven't told my boss yet as to what's happening, but um, I've got a I, I, I've got an offer with a company still straddling on the radio border, but not on the air, not doing production, any of that sort of stuff. Right. And um, I'm seriously considering taking it. Um, the money is right. I get a car with it as well. Um you know, I get to be out of town, go to trade shows and stuff like that. So, really? yeah. interesting. So it's um, you is know, it, it's is it a marketing kind of you have job to sell stuff? No, have is I'm going to have Amway. That's what I was going to say. Two syllables, and they are Am and Way. Um, <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing like a good pyramid scheme and a Ponzi. <laughs> um, God, I wonder if Pyramid and Ponzi dot com is taken off the check, but. <laughs> The company is an engineering company, and they specialize in studio build-outs, and they um, also have a wireless solution that um, if, let's say you're at a game, you're at a radio station, and you're at a football game or something like that, you've got to get your um, your audio codec back to the station. you got to get your audio back, but damn it, you can't get anything to move. There's no bandwidth. You can't, it won't go. This company sells prioritized internet so that when you connect to their box, you're getting out and you're broadcasting your game, whether it's video or audio, when nobody else can get the signal. You've got it. Yeah, now, that, that, that is a giant problem for stations. It yeah, is, but so, would stations pay for it? Because I'm assuming it costs money. It does, and it costs an exorbitant amount of money, and there's already 300 stations that have the service. Wow. So there's some that stations, many stations not being owned by, you know who. 
we do have some big companies hmm. actually okay um but people use this service as um a dedicated solution to like when they don't have internet at their transmitter site but they do have cell service they use this box to get their audio from the studio to a transmitter site Interesting. so it's perfect for that um yeah. And like I said, it, it does cost money, but it is well worth the money that people have. And it's not a lot of people will use it as like insurance that they know they're going to get their stuff on the air and there's not going to be any last minute cancellations. I can't get to the Internet. Somebody kicked the wire out of the wall. There's too many people using hotspots. You know, you're going to get on with this thing. That's great. Now, so my that's question, just one of the many services, though, my question would be, how would you accepting this position affect us and our time here um i will probably have more time available okay that's fine then i i approve you know sometimes yeah. this might have to be done from the road not like it's already not done for them from the fucking road right now yeah, yeah where are you right now so right now i'm on the corner of i'm not <laughs> fucking sure and google it okay <laughs> that's where i currently am I'm, I'm um actually i was telling jess i need to walk into a 7-eleven real quick which I will mute the phone because I need something to put on my tongue because I'm getting parched like an old lady and I've got like going on. Okay. So, but I'm almost in beautiful Frederick, Maryland, almost Almost. where they are brining the roads. Oh yeah. You got some weather coming. Oh yeah. There's something coming. And you know how it is here, Jeff, Jesus Christ, you know, you get, you know, uh, an eighth of an inch of snow and they got to close everything the fuck down around here. Well, you'll, you'll, you'll laugh at this. Um, when I was there, this would have been the winter of 2010 when we had back to back blizzards. It was like, Oh, that was a fun one. There was a blizzard and then, and then we, we recovered and then there was another blizzard and then there was another blizzard. And so we had like 20 foot snow drifts in the middle of the road. And obviously in Maryland, they don't have enough plows to deal with back to back, you know, blizzards dropping 20 foot snow drifts. And so they were just, they would plow one lane on every street. And, and so, that was it. And that was it. And if so, if a truck had to make a delivery at a business on that street, they were in that lane. And yeah, you just would, either had to I, go I a different way or you got stuck behind the truck. It's a skill set that, that, you know, they don't have down there. No. I, I remember live when, when I moved to Virginia, I remember the very first snowstorm, Virginia style snowstorm, right? I think it was a half inch of snow. And they just closed shit down. Oh, my God. They, they close everything close down here down. in Nashville if you say flurry. Oh, there it goes. That's the same way oh. in Raleigh. When I was in Raleigh, they they said, oh, we may have um, a little bit of freezing drizzle. They closed school for two days. They I weren't right. having any of that shit. When my daughter decided she didn't want to be in Maine anymore because she didn't like snow, she wanted to move where it was warm, and she decided to move to California. Good move. And I said, well, where are you moving to? Well, actually, I drove her out there. Was a, this was a time when her and I took a cross-country trip. Here, here was how this quick story went. Her and I, um, she graduated from college, and uh, she said, geez, Dad, I, I don't think I want to use my degree. I think instead I want to move to California. And, of course, I went, what? Because... She was graduating with a five-year degree, double major, and um, she owed zero dollars because we paid cash for her education. Wow. So that she wouldn't have to graduate. We had a deal with her. We said, you know what? Here's the deal. We're going to pay for your college, but we will not pay for a wedding. And that's the deal. Okay. That was it. And, and, and I think that's fair. It was, you know, a $70,000 education or a uh, $20,000 divorce. What do you want? Exactly. So, so, um, I had both. <laughs> <laughs> so we got into the car and we drove to California. Actually, we drove to Utah and then, I mean, uh, to Salt Lake city. And then she went to us. So anyways, I said, so where are you going to live? She says, Oh, Truckee. And I said, Oh, really Truckee. I don't know if you know what Truckee is. No. Truckee's a, Truckee's a stone throws away from Lake Tahoe. They get oh. more snow in Lake Tahoe than they get in the Finger Lakes. Yeah. The snow is crazy. So she uh, she did that for one winter and then moved to San Diego. 
<laughs> and then I can only there. imagine. Hey. I have friends that say, "Oh yeah, I'm in, I'm out near Las Vegas. How close? Tahoe? No, I'll see you in the summer." No. Yeah. No, that that is that, and her experience, and, and while living in trucking, she ended up moving back uh, close there for a while, and she moved to San Jose, but. Uh, the, her her friend had a bear break into their house. Wow! There, there was a cougar attack. They had they they just had all kinds of things we don't get here. And so when she decided to move back to Maine, I was like, "Oh, you're not going to mind the snow? Oh no, no, snow's fine. I'm going to take up skiing again." One of the first couple of winters that I was down here, two things happened. One, we had a stretch of like three days where the high was five degrees. And obviously that doesn't happen very often here. But no, no, no. that's when I found out that what most of the places do here, and I'm discovering th this again in a lot of the houses I've been looking at, um, they put their water heaters outside in either a garage or a shed. But they put their water heaters in unheated yeah. spaces uninsulated you know they're just they're just outside yeah, yeah. mine yeah. is in a shed and i was renting here when this happened high of five degrees and where i come from water heaters are indoors and everything's fine and it can get cold and you don't have to do anything what i didn't realize is that you have to here you have to drip the faucets if it's going to get too cold and i didn't do any of that so i wake up one morning after it's been a high of five and I have no hot water. I have a trickle of cold water, but I have no hot water at all. And I can't get a hold of the the landlord. And then I, I think I finally got a hold of him, but he, he was like, you just got to wait it out. And he didn't tell me anything to do either. And then the, the temperature warmed up. It got into the 40s. The sun was shining. And all of a sudden, I heard pop. And then I heard water spraying. Ah. Uh. The pipe coming from outside to the water heater out in the shed next to my house burst. And that's when I discovered I didn't know where the water shutoff was to the house. And my landlord was traveling and I couldn't get a hold of him. And I'm in an absolute panic because this water, you can just hear, it's just spraying. You can hear it. And it took me an hour and a half to get a hold of the landlord for him to tell me where the shutoff was. And luckily, he was able to get somebody to come out. And now I know all the things to do when the weather's going to be that cold so that that doesn't happen again. The other thing that happened was we got, not at the same time, we got maybe three inches of snow. And in Nashville, that is a catastrophe. That is devastation, which I thought, you know, it's fine. It just means I don't have to be out driving with these idiots but I, I did want to get out and shovel the walk because that's what you do, right? Where I come from, you shovel the walk when it snows so that it doesn't freeze over. But I didn't have yeah. a snow shovel because I live in the South. So I asked my neighbor if he had a shovel, and this man brought me a garden shovel. And <laughs> I, I tried, but you cannot shovel snow with a garden shovel. But it was light and fluffy, so I got a big push broom out, and I was able to clear the driveway and the walk with a push broom, and I took a picture of it. And while I'm doing this, by the way, I am literally the only person outside my house, other than a couple of people who are walking down the middle of the, the snowy road. I'm not on a road that's ever going to get plowed. They're walking down the middle of the snowy road, going to the gas station down the road, because I guess they thought they were going to starve in the you know couple of days yeah, that we were going to have the snow on the ground. And they're looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm out there clearing the driveway and the sidewalk. I took a picture of it. I posted on social media. Not bad for a push broom. The next day, it's 50 degrees. All the snow is melted. Nobody else in the neighborhood has had to lift a finger. And a friend of mine, a couple weeks later, comes to visit from Cincinnati. And he says, I'm worried about you. I brought you a present. Come up to the hotel and get it. I drive up there. This man bought me a snow shovel and brought it down from Cincinnati. What a good boy. Well, God bless. I've never used what it on snow. Boy. I've used it to clean up uh, dead possums that my dog has killed and dead raccoons that my dog has killed and dead squirrels that my dog has killed, but it has never been used on snow. Your dog is a killer. Yep. It's not even this dog. It's the dog that passed last year. I think that here, as I remember, when we owned the, the, the restaurant, um, it was a uh, city ordinance. You had to shovel in front of your house or business. I think that's true. Most places where snow is a regular thing. Yeah. I don't it think was, it's true here. I, 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 I remember um, when we had the ice storm back in 80, no, 90, 
Uh, six. See, daughter was in a, was it 96? No, wait, it would have been, it was when I was still in college. So 93, it was 93. Yeah. Was it when you were, think. when you were up in, My, in, uh, Cortland? No, it was when I was in Vermont. I think it was oh. 95 or 96. Cause yeah, my daughter was, I think going into, no, it might've been 94. So whatever it was, people are fucking just so unprepared for life. Right. Yeah. They're just so unfucking prepared for life. This is why they run out and get toilet paper when they think there's going to be a snowstorm or, or eight cases of water, yeah. whatever the fuck it is they buy. But we had this ice storm, and this was the one in upstate New York and Vermont, and everything was shut down. And I couldn't get back home because I lived in a I lived on an island with a ferry that connected, blah blah blah, and uh, was working in radio. And people were showering at the station because we had a generator, yada yada. But the biggest thing that people called the station for, and were panicking about, is all my food is going to go bad. I have no way to keep it cold. What? Have you fucking thought about bringing it outside and was... putting it in the fucking freezing snowbank? Right. There's an idea. <laughs> there's no, there's no resourcefulness. People are just without any resourcefulness when it comes to this shit. Yeah. They just, it's just all kinds of shit. And not, and I'm not going to pick on you. I'm going to pick on you a little bit, but just like one of the things I always did as a landlord is said. Here's where the water shutoff is. Here's where this shutoff is. Here's I wish my landlord is. had done that. I walked through with them because it's my fucking investment. And I don't want the fucking place falling down. Right. Because a pipe breaks. Right. I one time had a tenant call me and say, my house is very cold. <laughs> and I said, we'll turn on the heat. <laughs> and they said, we don't have any heat in this house. I what? said, of course you have heat. There's a thermostat. I don't know where it is. Now I showed it to him when I when I went when I did it. But at eleven o'clock at night, I go to their house. The thermostat was right outside their fucking bedroom door. They walked out their bedroom door and it faced them right in the face. They said, "Oh, I didn't know what that was." That wow. didn't know what that was. Wow. You're a thirty-five-year-old woman, and you don't know what it is. Are you kidding me? Is that somebody that went from her? And, and I don't. I'm not saying this to criticize because sometimes people just. Oh, criticize. Go ahead. Somebody who went from her father's house to her husband's house, and then maybe this was the first time she was living on her own and didn't know how any of that stuff worked. No, you know, uh, um, no, she, she was, um, she, she was, um, she was a lesbian. Not, uh, and I'm not. That sure would not that that affect her ability to understand a thermostat. No, I, I think that she did not. It was not something that that was in her, in her scope of learning. Yeah. Because she never owned a house, she never owned da da da. So she didn't have a, a husband to say, "Ah, oh, here's a." Not that a husband is going to tell you how to do it, but those, all those things—a husband, a dad, blah blah blah, a mom, whatever. None of those people were involved in her life. No, she just didn't care to know. It wasn't her thing. That same tenant called me another time to say she didn't have heat. After and again, you showed her where it was. Night, no, oh, this time she ran out of oil oh. and didn't know she had to call and put oil in the oil tank. That's not a thing I would probably think of. How the fuck do you, you got to put oil in your oil tank, right? If you know you that know, that's how your house is heated. I've never lived yeah, in a place down, that had an down oil here, tank. That's not a thing. Yeah. No, that's not a thing. It's a, you got down here, you got heat pumps or you got electric heat or yeah, you got gas either. heat, you know, and the gas is coming from the gas main, not from a tank outside. Yeah, see, we don't have natural, we have very little natural gas because it's so rural. No, yeah. no rural areas have it. You know, some of the, some of the cities, but even then, the cities have it. They don't use it that much. They're not, they don't trust it. They don't like it. They don't want to use it. It's too expensive and blah, 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 blah. And, and this is an old, it's, it's an old, old city. So there's a lot of old people. As they start to die off, thank goodness, then the youth come in. <laughs> And they start bringing in heat pumps and new thinking and new stuff. But until then, it's oil, heat, and furnaces. Mm-hmm. Got to have you a boiler down in the in the cellar, and that's how that's how that's how they do it. All right, Jess, we got Chris's uh, side of things. You had 
something too. And are you willing to share? I am. And as a matter of fact, I have two stories. I can tell them both or you can pick which one. Well, there- I, I, I'm interested in the, you were contacted by investigators. I was contacted by investigators looking for the car that he was driving. But also I was contacted by the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. Again? What? No, Wally didn't know this story. Oh. Uh, what is this? The Archdiocese? Why are they contacting you, Miss Nunny Nun Nun? Well, not for, not to induct me into anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Which one do you want me to tell first? Man, I... I want to know about the archdiocese, really. All right. So I get Can a letter. I, let, let, from, let me let me just preface this real quick. You know how you know she's Catholic, don't you, Wally? I don't. You know how much she's getting laid? None. <laughs> <laughs> You're such an idiot. So I'm, I'm just going to put this out there. My aunt, 75 years or so, has been a nun for 55 years. Wow. Just to let you know. Yeah, wow. Wow. Well, I would like to preface this with the fact that I am not actually Catholic. Um, So I get it. If you were. I get a letter from the Archdiocese. I've never been Catholic. Um, I'm good. Good. Neither have I. I I get a letter from the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. And actually, the fact that I've never been Catholic is, is relevant to this story. The letter says that my former husband has given my information to the archdiocese requesting that we annul our marriage because <laughs> one of at least one of us according to the letter at least one of us was catholic we did not get married in the catholic church and we did not get permission from the church to get married elsewhere now again i've never been catholic Hold and, on one second. I need to pick up my jaw to, I pick up my jaw to first. my knowledge Neither has my ex-husband. But I understand what's happening here. His little bride to be, the little the little girl that he was cheating on me with the, the same whole time. One that be, yep. The same one that I, I'm not gonna say her name, but that same one. The same one. Oh, who, you're not gonna say this one's name either, right? I'll say it. It's no. Lauren. Well, I was gonna say, is it gonna be Lauren? You want me to give her last name and address too? You might as well. Um, no, no, no. She, which funny thing, by the way, not only does she have my ex-husband that she then went and got, she's not there anymore, but she went and got a job at my former radio station as well. But anyway, yeah. she wanted to get married in the church and apparently she's Catholic and they can't get married in the Catholic church because he's divorced. Apparently he didn't tell the church that he's divorced twice. I told them. Oh, 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 wait a minute. I, I, I didn't know he had another what? one. What? Yeah, he was married before me. And Did you know? Yeah. Yeah. He had a little girl with her. Um, I found this out like at the end end that he had a little girl with her. And in order to not have to pay child support, he let her new husband adopt his daughter. Back the fuck up. He what has a, a kid too? He's got four kids. The little girl that he let get adopted, and then three with a woman he didn't marry, but he was with before me. Holy shit. Oh, you I'm didn't gonna... know the part where he was $40,000 behind on his child support? Um, <laughs> You didn't know that? No, okay. no, you never, never, you never told me that one in the studio. You know? okay. okay, so, so uh, back to the Archdiocese what? of Washington, D.C., <laughs> He says that all he needs from me is to write back confirming the information that he has been provided by my former husband. Now, I happen to know that there's no way he thought I was going to play nice by giving them my information. But also that if I didn't play nice, he could just confirm that his ex is crazy and has made it her mission to make his life miserable, blah, 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 blah. But I did it anyway. I sent back a... I think it was three page letter. It was either three or five page letter detailing all of the things about our marriage, including the fact that he and I, that neither of us was ever Catholic. The fact that at one point we thought I might be pregnant and he asked me to get an abortion. The fact that um, his, you know, annulling his marriage with me wasn't going to do any good if he was already divorced from this other woman. Like I, I gave the church all the stuff, 
all of the stuff. And I said, listen, obviously it's up to you, the kind of people you want to allow to get married in your church. But she knew he was married when they were together, you know, when they were together and all of these things about him. So uh, there you go. You know I Jess, do not agree to the annulment because it would make his life easy. Can you speak Spanish at all? <laughs> no. Because, man, I'd love to hear you do it because it sounds like a Telemundo something. <laughs> I wish I could make this stuff up. I wish I could. Wow. Yeah. Now, makes me quitting a job seem like nothing. And by the way, I found out through somebody else that um, their wedding pictures were from their wedding at a park. Wow. Not in a church. Mm. Wow. Not sorry. Okay, I must have missed something. So, story is fantastical. They actually got married? They did. And apparently, she's either pregnant now or has had a baby. So I guess that makes five kids he's got. That so we who, know of? who did the wedding? Was it Elvis who oversaw oh, I, the wedding? I don't know. I don't know. It wasn't the Catholic Church, so it must have been. Sure Elvis. It wasn't the Catholic Church. Nope. Was it? What was it? Was the wedding? It was like a, a Jellystone Park, so it was like Yogi Bear did it. <laughs> I wish. I feel like that would have gotten say, back Lauren, to me. This guy, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord! Can you imagine being the doctor, being the obstetrician? Pulling that baby out, slapping it on the ass and going, oh, congratulations. You've got a grifter. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Like wow. she's she's no prize either. And I, I don't feel bad at all for what he's doing to her because, by the way, he's still on the dating apps. But wow. the baby I kind of feel bad for. I remember seeing a picture of those two together at a hockey game and just thinking, God, I wanted to push her down the steps. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So Man, I, the investigator. Guys, I got to tell you, you guys, I am so fucking happy. I've got the wife that I've got. Yeah, you are. I mean, I know I said this. Oh, and her right ago. titty, of course. Yeah, And that mm -hmm. right titty, which is fantastic. <laughs> I, know, I know I've said this. And I said it before that, that, that she's fan, she's fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I and I, I don't have any fucking stories about investigators or or the Catholic Church or the Archdiocese or any of that shit. None of it. Mm -hmm. And I am so thankful for that. Listening <laughs> when I listen to you, to holy fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The investigator That's... story isn't even as exciting as that one. The investigator. No, no. I want to. Is it, now the investigator story is about the same guy. Yeah. About the Alwa, you got to tell Yeah, he's, he's, my ass. he is a thousand percent <laughs> trash. So, yeah, it's about the same guy. Um, I'm driving. Where did you find this guy? Like in a fucking mud pool? <sighs> I found him on. So it was like him and a couple of amoebas swimming around? Yeah, it's like called Match.com. Organism or some shit? Yep, Match.com. Oh, wait, you got him on Match.com? Got him on Match.com, yep. So was it KitchenMatches.com? I guess maybe. Maybe I, maybe I got to the wrong website. Um, yeah, I was driving, Possible. I was driving to work one day and a call comes in and this man asks if I am who I am. And I'm like, yes, telemarketer who's calling. And he said, I am looking for, gave his name. And I was like, yeah, uh, we're not together anymore. He's like, no, I know. I saw your website. Because, by the way, I put up a website about <laughs> him. saw the website. Yeah. So You've seen awesome. the website, haven't you, Wally? No, I, I haven't. I, I just, oh, I just I sent you the what link. A, what a work of art. Yeah. What a work of art. I put God up a almighty. website detailing what he is, and then I sent it to people. I got to keep uh, some of his family members and pretty much his entire high school graduating class in the divorce. And so I sent it to some people that he graduated high school with, and they sent it to the rest of the graduating class. And now if you Google his name, it is literally the first thing that comes up all of this time later. Um, Hello. He tried to use, do that. He tried to use it against me in the divorce, but it didn't work. The judge didn't care. Um, but anyway, the investigator saw my website. And so he thought that perhaps I would be willing to help him find this car so that he could repossess it. Because you know who hadn't been paying his bills. It's the first oh. thing on Google. I just Googled yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, so now they want to take his car away. So. Yeah. Man, and I said, I said, listen, 
he's back in Maryland and I'm in Tennessee, but I will do everything oh. in my power to help you. And I, <laughs> I messaged Chris. I messaged every. In fact, Chris, I think at the time you were dating somebody who worked in the rental office at the place he was living. Um, because I, at one point, I yeah, feel that like you 14, said something like she's probably not supposed to give me that information, but I'll try. I'll see right. what I can find out. Yeah, that was in like fourteen or fifteen. Yeah. Yep. Holy yep. shit. So yeah, and I so I told this investigator. I said, I'll tell you what, I will do everything in my power. I will reach out to everyone I know in the state of Maryland to have them looking for this car. If you will promise me that you will send me video of you pulling it up on the tow truck and repossessing it, he said, you got a deal. <laughs> Look, now that I'm living up here, I'll go on a bounty hunt. I don't mind. Well, I don't. Oh I don't know if that's a thing anymore. Like, I don't. I don't know what the situation was. I know that another investigator contacted me about three months later, and he had taken over the search. And I told him the same thing, and he was like, "We're not allowed to give video or photos." Blah blah blah. And I was like, "That's fine. I'll help you anyway." Um, but as far I don't. I don't know whether they ever got it. But let me just put this out there. If anyone is looking for my ex-husband to repossess something, I will get as many people on the job as possible mm -hmm. to help you do that. Fucking fantastic. It is so funny because the first hit, the first hit is your site. Yep. Okay. And three words that make me powerless. Seahawks, Nats, Caps, Wizards. Those are not three words, you stupid fuck. But that's what's on his Twitter. Okay. Uh, so he's dumb too. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. wasn't Wasn't he following around that artist for a while, like a little lost puppy dog? What artist? Jared Neiman. No, that's me. That's me who was following him around like a lost puppy dog. No, I well, no, I thought that he. I, and I got the stories confused. I thought that uh, shit for brains wanted to be on a roadie for him or something. Not as far as I know. No. Okay. No. God. I, yes, yeah, you turn out to be a groupie. It could be the cocaine. I apologize. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. But uh, I, I, I know you liked Jared because I have a, I have an air check somewhere of you and I saying that he's going to be your next husband. So. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I actually stopped saying that when he, when Jared got married, because I thought that was disrespectful. And then um, since I'd been here in Nashville, when I was years ago, when I was still working at a trade publication called Country Air Check, I was doing an interview with someone and she said, did you know that there are rumors about you and Jared? And I was like, are they good ones? Somebody somebody was spreading rumors that I slept with Jared. And I was like, not for lack of trying. I didn't. <laughs> Like, maybe you think that rumor is going to hurt yeah. me, but I don't think it is. But then I saw him um, sometime after that, and I said, listen, I I heard that this rumor was going around, and I just need you to know that I had no part in that, and that, in fact, once you got married, I stopped saying the, you know, the thing about you being my future ex-husband. He said, shit, if I'd heard that rumor, I would have said it was true, first of all. <laughs> but he, he said, you know, we're divorced, right? Wow. So I was like, oh, so there's still a chance. Got it. Okay. About to say so, you could have fucked your name in, huh? Could have. Well, haven't how yet. How about that? Yeah, still hey, not true. You're you're closer to him than I am. That's so. <laughs> <laughs> I think both of us are probably happy about that. Uh, probably. <laughs> I'm, I'm not trying to fuck him. <laughs> you got you guys. <laughs> not that you know. Hairs. <laughs> not that I know. You know Jared Neiman. You know what I bet? Nipple hair. I bet. <laughs> I bet he's got a little. You think, you think Jared has nipple hair? hair? Just a little bit. I bet he's got a little. Hmm. Like a, a taste, a tasteful amount of short cropped nipple hair. <laughs> a very tasteful amount that would, you know, look good between anyone's teeth. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Not not anything that you would like choke on because it went too far down your throat when you gave it a big sock. Jesus. Nothing like that. <laughs> God, well, that girl, that her middle name, the one that from college. I'm pretty sure it was <laughs> whenever I would say it. <laughs> Uh, I fed, fed her butter just to try to stop. That's terrible. That's terrible. Terrible. That's, that's yeah, it's been awful. pretty serious today with these serious stories of 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 wayward peoples. You think the archdiocese was a? I mean, it was true, but you think it was a serious story? Because I still think it's a hilarious story. Well, it's hilarious, but. It's like serious stuff. You know what's funny about that what website? The, the church is really serious, though, about keeping fucking 
like people out, I guess, huh? Well, oh yeah, they absolutely they want to they want to make sure they want to keep it to you know their standards. They want to keep shrinking the Catholic Church. I guess. Yeah, and the funniest part about that website, other than the fact that you got a one hundred year fucking renewal for GoDaddy on that thing, other than that, what's funny? What's funny is that I probably would have let it go by now. We got divorced seven years ago. I don't even, I'm not even, like, I'm not even mad anymore. I'm just, like, you got to stop fucking with me. He he had a lawyer that I know he couldn't afford to pay send me a, a letter. And it didn't say cease and desist, which is how I know that he did not pay her. It said... I highly suggest you take the website down because if it causes him to lose out on jobs, then we will pursue blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, first of all, prove to me that this website cost him a job. Prove it. There's no way that you can because no hiring company is going to say, well, we would have offered you the job, but then we Googled you and saw what your ex-wife had to say about you. Secondly, you were a by punk. the way, and your ex-wife's a real cunt, by the way, Eric. I forgot to tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we've decided to hire your ex-wife because there's some people we don't like either. Right. Yeah, and she's going to break some kneecaps. She's going to write a really good website, too. She's going to put up a sternly worded website. <laughs> and, and meanwhile, Jess returns his letter and says, Dear Counsel, Fuck your mother, Jess. I didn't return it. I took a picture of it and texted it to a whole bunch of people. And I said, I wonder if this lawyer knows how he's $40,000 behind on his child support and he's not going to fucking pay her for anything either. So I know he couldn't afford her to pursue anything against me in the first place. Secondly, I didn't break any laws. Anything that I say about him in that website, there's documented evidence included on the web. There's screenshots and everything. So I haven't lied about him at all. It is an absolute true account of what he is. So because he had this lawyer send it to me, though, and it was like a month before the hosting would have expired, I was probably, this was a couple of years after the divorce, and at that point, I was probably like, eh, I've made my point. Maybe I can let it go. You I got that on. letter, you and I was on. like, logged the right on and renewed it for another two years. Yeah, he, he should have shut up, yeah. right? If he, had, if he had just left it alone, I probably would have let it go. So does he, he continues to sort of, sort of eke in or sidle up and, and just be an asshole? Every I mean, now and it's again? been, it's probably been... I'd say probably about five years since that happened. I haven't heard anything from him since then. He doesn't asshole anymore. Well, I, I, I've heard him. He got. I think he got married in 2018. So that would have been the last time I heard from him was whenever the archdiocese. And he still lives in Baltimore. He lives in the general Frederick area. And Chris, you never see him out and about. Oh no, no. If I did, I would clock him. Oh, please do video if you ever do see him. Please just have somebody take video and send it to me. No, I, if I could, I would go and fuck his gas tank. Okay. I mean, there, I, I have no, <laughs> I wouldn't hold anything back from that asshole. You know, I, I'm, I'm sort of feeling bad for you right now, thinking that you've got a dick so small it could fit into a gas tank. <laughs> you know what? It's not the length. It's the, uh, well, actually it is. <laughs> Yeah, that's a that's a tight fit, my friend. And unless, yeah. of course, it's unless of course it's an old style unleaded tank. You know, that's the tank. worst thing. I'm okay with my dad telling me I'm a disappointment, but not my wife. <laughs> yeah, if it, if it's a diesel tank, well, then I'd be impressed. But if it's just a gas, uh, it's not impressive. Mm. That's a small hole, or, or or a small diameter at least, or maybe it's both. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> could be could be so i have really the only thing i wanted to uh bring up today guys in capri pants <laughs> have you fucking seen this oh you yeah because i live in nashville tennessee what oh yeah i had a, i had a guy down at the radio station in dc that uh dressed that way he also I, if you dressed talk in to my wife too. my wife knows that I can't stand capri pants on my wife. Just, 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 my wife has some pretty good legs. By the way, someone hit on her the other day, called her, 
back at her office after she'd already done some work for him. He laughed and then called her later to let her know she had really nice legs. Ew. Like, what the fuck is going on here with a fucking skankaroo man? Ew. But she wears these capri pants. And I just, I fucking hate them. Either show your legs or don't show your legs, but that little fucking weirdness. But I'm seeing a lot of guys wear these fucking capri pants. I just real quick have a question. Has, has it ever occurred to you that when women wear things like that, it has nothing to do with whether you get to see their legs? Oh yeah, no, okay. I, I know that. Just, okay. I, 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 I don't give a shit. I'm still going to tell her. <laughs> I, your legs look fantastic. You should show them. Mm. Just the, the capri. She likes capri pants, and so it's, do it's I. all right. But, They're comfortable, but I fucking hate them. Mm. And my let's 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 let me true. My wife lets me know the shit that I wear. She hates. So the capri pants I got you for Christmas, I should take those back. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. No, unless they've got little silver buttons at the bottom. They then do. I'll be fine. They do. <laughs> I just I don't understand this new trend, this capri pant trend. They're the most hideous, especially here. Yeah, you know, maybe may okay in a warmer climate, but we're gonna have fucking two feet of snow on the ground. Walking around in a pair of capri pants might not be the best idea. Yeah, those are oh, for great. summer. Now you're it's climate spring. shaming. It's bad. Climate shaming. I am climate shaming. Those Fuckers. are for spring. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand. It's not just capri pants. I don't understand. I don't know if I don't understand it. Yeah, I don't understand it. Just fashion trends in general. I often don't either. And I, uh, you know, here's what I don't understand the man bun. I don't find it attractive. Oh, no. But listen, the if you want to put your hair in a bun, I'm not going to tell you not to. That's that's no, your but, but your thing. The man bun doesn't say. It, it just it says the wrong stuff. It just, just it says I can't change a tire. <laughs> That's what it says. Hey, I got a crew cut and I can't it change says, a tire. Okay. <laughs> it says I don't know where the shutoff is for the water. But I can it change a tire, things. and I know where the shutoff is for the water, and I helped a guy jumpstart his battery the other day. Right, right, right. You've you got don't a have a dick than me. No, but I sometimes know. I put my hair in a bun. You do with pencils? No. Okay, good. Who still that, does it with pencils? Oh, I see that now and again. Really? Oh well, yeah. I thought pencils that was a chopsticks. 70s thing. I see people would do it with pencils and chopsticks. Yeah, my mom's ex-husband's wife does it with chopsticks. Yeah, I, I see hmm. that I see that on occasion. I have not seen that in forever, but also I I don't think I'm paying that much attention. Yeah, no. Oh, I you know what? I I pay attention to this shit. Because it, it bugs me so much. And I don't know. The norms are changing. So I think it's the changing norms. The that norms always me. change, though. And, I mean, they're bringing, back, they're bringing back the stuff we wore in the 80s that should never be brought back. Well, don't bring back leg warmers or those fucking turtle, those fucking wacko turtlenecks. They're bringing back. I've seen leg warmers in the last couple of years. And they're bringing yeah. back stirrup pants. Remember stirrup I'm okay pants? With that. Mm, no, I'm okay. Yeah, I mean, but I, but I, I'm okay with other people is, wearing them. I'm just never going to wear them. No, but I, I see them as like probably yoga yoga pants with stirrups on them. Maybe yeah. I can see that. It's a lot of that. There's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of those yoga pants going. And I gotta tell you, I'm a big fan of the yoga pants. guys in yoga pants. Yo, guys in yoga pants, not very attractive. I'm thinking of getting jeggings. You should get jeggings. I think that would be a good look on you. Yeah. You know, I think, and I have seen some hot men when I when I was still going to the kickboxing gym. Um, everybody wore leggings there, men and women both. And there were some hot men in leggings, and I did not care that they had leggings on. I I don't like seeing the 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 yoga pants on guys who have the big wide crack. <laughs> The huge ass crack that's really wide. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about a guy having a moose knuckle, and I was wondering what the, what the fuck you were looking no, at. No, not a moose knuckle. No, the, uh, the the wide ass crack. So it looks like you, you know, it's like the, the expressway. Like you had to pay, you had to pay a dollar twenty five <laughs> to get in that area. Hong yeah. Kong, use your easy pass. <laughs> and that's the one. Yeah, that this that it's disturbing. It's disturbing to me. Mm. I'm sorry it is. It maybe it's because I'm an old fuck. Probably. But it's distur it's disturbing to me. I still I still it, it just is. I, I I don't know what's going on with it. 
I, I really don't. I don't it's, know what to tell you. It grosses me out a little bit. Hmm. It, it, it just does because I'm figuring if you can see that much ass crack, they're probably going commando. Probably. And if they're sitting, if they're sitting in a chair and they get up, there's probably commando crack. I just, I just, I feel like you're, chair. you're spending an awful lot of time looking at other men's asses. And no, I, it's not just men. And there's no, no shame I, in that if, if that's what you like to do. But if it bothers you, I, I just maybe think you could look in a different direction. <laughs> it bothers me because it's in the way all the time. There's always somebody walking in front of me with, with that going on. Oh. I don't like that any more than I like juicy shorts on 60 year old women. <laughs> Okay, but you know what? Sixty-year-old like women no longer have to give a fuck what you like because we just—I I say I'm we 60. as if I'm sixty. You get to a certain point, you just don't care. I'm going to wear what I like, regardless of what you think of it. Well, they, they ought to care because they ought to care. Why? A lot of them wear because a lot of them end up on Match.com wearing their juicy shorts, and they should have cared. <laughs> <laughs> and they end up with them crazy fuck. That's but, it. We're getting and, boycotted by sixty-year-old women in juicy shorts. There's probably a whole Facebook group of them, and they're going to come after us is. now. Which hey. actually would be a good thing. Say more because maybe we'll get more listeners right. that way. Play, play that recording of of the guy who was sitting with his mother. <laughs> play that again. That'll bring it all around. Yeah. We'll really understand the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Go go ahead and cross off the um, the love pink people from the ones that'll be advertising on our show. Uh, uh, Take that away. Um, isn't that from Victoria's Secret? I don't know, but I just killed them too. They are having to rethink their whole shit. Have you guys heard the song about the song called "I Know Victoria's Secret"? No. no, there's this tick. There's a she's an artist and she's on TikTok and she made this song called I Know Victoria's Secret. And it's that she was created by a dude and none of the standards that Victoria's Secret promotes about bodies are even attainable by 99 percent of the women in the world because they came from the imagination of a man. And so she, this song went viral on TikTok the second she put it up. And then she actually recorded a studio version and it hit the radio charts. Like she, she got tons of attention for this song. Really? Mm-hmm. Her name is Jess. I haven't Jess. heard of Victoria's Secret. You what? It's a, uh... I don't shop at Victoria's Secret. I think that that's a, I think Victoria's Secret is a, is a young, like an under 30 place. Maybe under 35. My daughter used to go to Victoria's Secret, and she's now 30, under 35, but over 30. I think she's 31 or 32. She doesn't go there anymore. Mm. It's not her thing anymore. I, I think it's. Uh, I think it's no, because I when you're younger, you, know you get all this advertising telling you that all your your stuff has to match, and this yeah. is how you're going to be attractive. And then you get to a certain age, and you're like. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to wear what's comfortable. Yeah. I think what young girls should be taught is that guys like girls. Yeah. Doesn't matter what and, you're. Or, or the guys who like girls don't care about Victoria's Secret right. or any of that shit. Right. And we just don't, at least from my perspective. That's it. None of that shit's important. The makeup and the fucking all the, the, the tons of perfume and and you know, fancy purses. Some of that stuff, I know that women and girls do it because it makes them feel good. Yeah, yeah that's absolutely. Good. But it's not something that a real, in my opinion, a real man is attracted to. That's not what attracts a real man. Sure. It, it's not, you know, tight pants and, well, it might get them to look. <laughs> but but it's not that shit. Right. It's all the intangibles. It's 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 the it's the it's the shit that you look for, Jess, and a guy, or Chris looks for a woman. I look. It's the intangibles. It's the things you can't put on. Mm -hmm. It's the things you can't gussy up. You can't color it. That's what I think. I think young girls need to learn that. Someone ought to teach them that. Don't get up. Don't be a fucking sucker to Cosmo Teen or whatever the fuck the magazines are. Yeah. Don't be a sucker to those. Those are just those are in influencers. I know they call them. Influencers, influencers, they're not influencers. They're paid marketers. Right. And they're, they they're giving paid. you insecurities so that you feel like you have to buy these products. 
Yeah, fuck that. You don't Which, have to. by the way, are not only targeted at young people. I saw a commercial recently where this woman had this big like necklace on and she said, statement necklace. And then she took it off and she said, or make a statement with my neck. Well, it was to sell some neck cream because your neck gets whatever when you get a certain age. And I'm like, am I supposed to be worried about my neck now? I'm not going to be, but... <laughs> Really? You're trying to make me feel insecure about my neck? See, it's all that shit. Like, uh, and uh, I'll just bring it up, and only for the because of this conversation, it's like that loomy shit. The same thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to smell; it'll keep you smelling fresh for 72 hours. Sole a fucking washcloth, right? It, it, it's fine. You don't need to spend fine because they have. I haven't looked online or, or, or looked to see how, how much this package costs. Neither have I. But I'm going to guess it's a you know it's 150 dollars for the package of you're going to get this deodorant shit and you get a bar of soap and this and a free gift. I'm looking. You don't need all that shit. I'm you looking. just don't. I'm good with a girl who smells like I- Irish soap or Irish Spring or whatever. Lumi deodorant Look, is never- 1750. 1750. How much is the package? There's a you know? there's a whole package. Yeah, they're advertising some package where you get a free gift. Here's so the a deodorant four, is seventeen. Just there's a the mini deodorant. sampler, a four pack mini sampler for twenty five bucks. Hang on. I'm just gonna go to Bath and Body Works, get some cucumber melon, and call it good. Yeah. Why not? If I want to smell that, I'll put on my own arm. So there's myself. a starter pack bundle for thirty five bucks. A trial set for twenty five. A stick and tube bundle for twenty eight, and choose your sense three pack of deodorant for thirty seven dollars. Which, by yes. the way, I mean deodorant is like six bucks at the grocery store, it's like regular yeah, think, deodorant. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was. See, I, so I don't. I, I think I told you I don't. I don't use deodorant. I I do have a stick of deodorant that I've had probably for four years. I think you mentioned that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I just don't use it. But we did get some for my. I explained I have a, uh, I have a grandson who's fifteen. Yeah. So one of his stocking stuffers will be deodorant. Fucking is. You're right. It's seven or eight bucks yeah. for deodorant. What? When did this shit happen? This year. When did, when did Old Spice become a commodity? Everything it's a is. Fucking, yeah, it's a commodity. Yeah, yeah I, I just saw a uh, Wagyu beef at uh, Wegmans for two thirteen a pound. Two dollars and thirteen cents. Two hundred thirteen dollars. Whoa! No, sir. Looking at it right. I'm sorry. Two nineteen ninety nine. A five Wagyu strip loin. Wow! Holy and to think shit. I was mad about eggs being five bucks. Yeah. Wow. Average He's price per that. steak they they say is uh, four hundred and sixty. Who's buying that? It ain't fucking me. Who's I tell buying you that what, in Frederick, Maryland? I will tell you who's buying that. The people who are buying these. Uh, one of the houses that came up in my search today, not the search where I'm like filter the things that are going to be in my budget, just the regular search. Right. It was $4 million. And they were these, it was two duplex, they call them tall and skinnies. Yeah. And they're they're popping up all over Nashville right now. They were next door to each other, two side by side duplex tall and skinnies. And the whole for for all of them was four million dollars. A million dollars a pop, and you still have to share a wall and hear somebody else's noise. Yeah, no. Some people just have me. money like to spend for no reason. I don't know if they do. I think banks are getting back to that. Hey, we'll loan anybody a dollar. Yeah, maybe. And getting to that point. So have you have, have did you have your showing yet? Had the showing. Um, I, were you there? No, I wasn't allowed to be here. I have to take the dogs and leave when they when they come. But I was parked across the street, so I knew when they left. Um, they gave feedback that, first of all, they said they saw another place similar to this one, but without the backyard, which my backyard is amazing. Um, but they saw a similar place to this one without the backyard that was 30000 less, but didn't need as much work as this one bullshit first of all because i've been looking at houses for a month right. and i've not seen anything for thirty thousand less than this mine is probably priced a little bit high but it's not thirty thousand dollars too high and then also they thought that there were probably security concerns because i have a security camera in my living room in my kitchen and my hallway i have
have dogs. Mm -hmm. I have security cameras so that when I'm not home, I can see what my dogs are doing. Huh. How are you going to address that? Are you going to my realtor is putting it in the in the notes? Um, you know the notes that say the refrigerator's not staying and the ring doorbell's not staying. She's going to put in there security cameras are for the owner to see her dogs, not for security concerns. Yeah, don't call it. Maybe maybe she just maybe she should not call them security cameras. Maybe she should call them dog sitter cameras or something well, like well, that. They, like they they weren't referenced at all in the listing initially, and the the people giving the feedback, the people who saw the house, used the word security cameras. Um, yeah, you know what? That That's just their way to try to bring down the price. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no. And then they also said that it could use a deep cleaning inside and out, which is bullshit. First of all, the house was deep cleaned a week ago. I think that what they were referencing was the deck because there's dust and dirt and leaves out there because I am a person who doesn't believe in washing the outside. <laughs> I don't I don't clean the outdoors. Right. But I guess I'm going to have to go and like wipe down the patio table or whatever. It's fine. It's fine. But so so the first the first showing is not going to be an offer. Why does Chris just randomly drop off the call? Maybe he went to wet his whistle. Maybe. So, um, so but you, Jess, how come your fucking realtor didn't like, it seems like this is something your realtor would, should have done before she showed it to anybody and said, Hey, Jess, probably should, we should clean off that back porch. She, she wasn't concerned that, about right? it. She wasn't concerned about it at all. She told me all of the things that I needed to address in the house and all of those things were addressed and the house was deep cleaned and it's cleaner you know than what? it's ever been. People, it, it's also become unrealistic yeah because of hgtv tv shows or For sell sure. your house and this and that and yeah people expect to walk into a place that's you know not lived in right and she Doesn't said have- she said that that woman who looked is probably somebody who has like white towels and blankets all over the house and i was like yeah and right. she's never owned a dog yeah, that, that, the people have these unrealistic expectations and th- they believe everything is, you know, it's been set by some professional has come in and put in special candles and and rearranged your furniture and said, oh, let's paint that table and make it do this. And yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah they, they're fucking nuts. They think that something that's been lived in is not going to have a scar. Listen, I got scars. <laughs> so the house has definitely got scars. Yeah. 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 So, so it's fine. They're not going to buy and, you know, somebody will. And we went and looked at a bunch of places today. We looked at four places. Who's we? Oh, you and your realtor? Yeah. Yeah. I thought there was maybe a a we or somebody you weren't talking about. No. No. Ain't nobody got time for that. All right. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But no, yeah, we went yeah. and looked so at... What, 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 are you, what are, you, are you looking at? Single family? Yes. Not anything that I have to share a wall with anybody. Right. So, like, the first place I looked at, it was cute. It had curb appeal, but it was very small. And then, and it had a, but it had a great garage, like a huge garage that had air conditioning, and it had, like, a workshop in the back. And wow. it was, and had a nice fenced yard. But the next door neighbors were really close, and they had so many cars in the back that I, it, like, it almost looked like they were running a used car lot out of the back of the out of the backyard. And they had tires piled up behind the their shed oh, yeah, next to the fence. That. And I was like, no, this is this is giving me vibes that I don't want to live here. And also, yeah. the house was just too small. And then we looked at all these other places, and it's like the the garage was perfect in this one and the kitchen was perfect in this one and the closets the one i liked the best the closets were so small that combined three of them would not be as big as my current bedroom closet <laughs> and we have a big walk in yeah i had my i had my closet renovated it had been two small closets and i had them rip out the wall between them right. and so now it's one big closet and it's perfect but I already have a problem with storage. There's no way that I could live in a house. But I loved that house. Like it had this little den down the steps off the kitchen and just it was it was pretty and had a great yard. But there was it, it was as I said to my realtor, like it's 
not a no, but I'm mildly disappointed, so it's not a fuck yes. And she said, no. Nope. Oh, you definitely you definitely want some yard because of the dogs, right? For sure has to have a, a fenced yard. And that's the other thing. This one had a fence, but it was it was privacy fence in the front and the back, but on the sides it was chain link. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like three foot high chain link fence. One of my dogs can jump no. that. She could jump the six foot privacy fence that I had and I had to put up an eight foot fence to keep her in. So, you know, that's adding another five grand that I would have to, you know, spend to get the fence up to where I needed it. There wasn't room to remodel closets and, you know, do what I would need to do if I wanted to make it make those closets work. And the bedrooms were just really small. So she said, if it's not a fuck yes, then we're not buying it. Okay. All right, then. So we're going to keep looking. Yeah. It's a, I think it's a long, arduous plan. It is. I yeah, just really it's, it's wanted to find it on my first day and have the first people who looked at my house give me an offer and just be done with it, because this is a lot. Oh, you know what? They still may come back. They may just... It's like when you negotiate for anything, because you know I've been negotiating for a long... You always do that shit. Yeah. Negotiating is always about that shit and and it's the wrong way to negotiate but people do it all the time yep where you fucking bad mouth you say please it's like it's 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 like when they you go for a job my house interview. it's like when you go for a job interview fucking never ever ever say anything bad about your former employer no ever. no ever. even if they were a fucking asshole that smacked you in the back of the head with a shovel every day you say, oh, no, I, I enjoyed work. I just feel it's like fun. it's time for me to find an opportunity where That's I can it. grow more in my career. No one wants to hear you bitch about anything. They mm-hmm. want to hear about what good shit you're going to bring to me. Nope. No, they negged my house. They negged it. Yeah, yeah. They were, they were, it, it's a bad thing to do. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's, it's, it's not something you can just say, it's not for us. Yeah. And just let it go. I appreciate and, the feedback. The and unless the realtor says, well, was there anything in particular? Well, it was. Okay. That's what that's where they said all this stuff is where it, they were specifically asked for feedback after showing. Yeah. After looking at the house. I and I appreciate it. And if, you know, if multiple people were like, well, the outdoors really could use a deep cleaning, then, <laughs> then maybe I could consider doing some more out there. But yes. I'm just not a person who cleans the outdoors. Yeah, no, uh, you know what? We don't, we don't either. <laughs> we don't, I, I told you, I don't even fucking rake our leaves. No. We don't rake leaves. No, we, we don't do I, had, I have somebody take care of the leaves in the front because they, they are like <laughs> six inches deep when they fall off this giant tree and you're yeah, just trudging through them. And also when people, the neighbors walk across my yard to get to each other, um, my dogs hear them trudging, <laughs> trudging through the leaves, and then they think somebody's here, and they start barking. So it was just easier. But the backyard is all leaves. I didn't touch that at all. Uh, just, just get a get a get a guy with a, or a girl or a guy. Get a guy with a fucking. I a have one of those, thing. and I still don't do it because it's still take the blowing thing out. <laughs> take that blowing thing out you have, Jess, and start get the blowing. That's what you got to do. That's what I got to do. So right, I so guess Chris we're not going to get Chris that. back. Yeah, does he does he write anything back to you? Did he say anything? I haven't seen it. I didn't text him, but I haven't seen anything. But you know what? what? We've been talking for a long time anyway. So okay, <laughs> I'm gonna have some beanie weenies now. All right, I'll talk to you yeah. next week. I like beanie weenies. That's good for you. You want to give me shit about about frozen dinners, but you go enjoy your beanie weenies. Oh yeah, fucking weenies are bad for you. Well, you know. <laughs> Bye. Bye.